Hi folks, I hope that you guys are doing pretty well. Uh, so today is Thursday, the 30th of November 2023. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about the prophecy um, in the uh, second epistle, if you like, or Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, okay? You know, uh, we all know that this prophecy here regarding the coming of the Antichrist is a topic of hot contention, if you like, amongst pastors and Bible scholars alike. Okay, uh, there are two main camps regarding this prophecy now. Before I begin to discuss the prophecy here uh, in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, then I also want to make you aware that I'm going to be talking about prophecies in Zephaniah, okay, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 13 to 20, and how they are all for the millennial kingdom, and I will show you that later. And also in Zechariah chapter 2, verses 1 to 13, and how they are also for the millennial kingdom. And uh, very recently I've done a video on my YouTube channel regarding prophecies in Zechariah and Zephaniah, okay? So this is a new video on my channel, it's probably like top 10 in the list. So check that one out. Okay. So uh, to do my deciphering regarding Second um, Thessalonians uh, chapter two verse three, then uh, all my biblical decipherings I only use the King James Bible. I only use the King James Bible because I believe that is the best uh, translation uh, from the Hebrew and the Greek text, if you like. Now, not only am I, am I only going, not only am I only going to use the uh, King James Bible to prove what I say, okay, but I'm also going to be using the original Greek text, okay, I've got the original translation here, and I'll show you the book a little bit later, okay, so I'm going to back up what I what I will say here regarding this prophecy in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 with the King James Bible and with the original uh, Greek text, okay so that there is no misunderstanding and also uh, of course as bible scholars whatever we say we've got to back up with the bible it's not good enough just to state an opinion without using the bible to prove it okay so let us read the prophecy here this is very very important folks because the majority uh camp uh believes that we that um you know, we'll have the rapture first and then that the Antichrist comes out later. That's not so. That's not what the Bible teaches. And also that's not what the Greek original text teaches either. Okay, and I'll prove it to you. Let us read it. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means. Okay, for that day. Let's break it into parts here. Now, where it says here, that day shall not come. It's talking about the day of the rapture. Okay. So let no one fool you or deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, meaning, meaning the rapture shall not come. So the rapture is not going to happen, except they come a falling away first, okay? So in other words, apostasy. So before the rapture, quite clearly saying that we need the falling away first, or the apostasy, and that the men of sin be revealed, in other words, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, okay? Period. Now, so uh, before we have the rapture of the church, okay, uh, this Bible prophecy here is quite clearly saying that we need the falling away first, okay, falling away before the rapture, okay, so we already have the apostasy, and on top of that, we got the word and, that the men of sin be revealed. Why would this prophecy say be revealed if it wasn't true? Okay, so quite clearly, the prophecy here is that we need the apostasy, which we already have, and that the men of sin be revealed, okay? In other words, the Antichrist, and then, boom, rapture of the church, okay? Um, many Bible scholars get confused with this um, prophecy because they actually read wrong translations, okay? Uh, in my view... Um, you know, I'm opposed to all other Bible translations, except for the King James. Um, I've done all my 31st World First Biblical decipherings, including the deciphering of the rapture of the church. First person in the world to do that. 
uh, by just using the uh, king chimes. So just to recap, and then we go to the Greek, let no man deceive you or let no one fool you or lie to you. That that die, meaning the die of the rapture, shall not come. In other words, read here carefully, shall not come. We got the word here, not. In other words, you are not going to have a rapture, okay? No rapture unless we have the apostasy, okay, which you already have unless we have the apostasy and that the Antichrist or the men of sin be revealed, revealed, folks, you know? Uh, I don't understand what, what part of the English language is it that you don't understand when it says here that we need the apostasy uh, first and that the men of sin be revealed. Look, look how clear in simple English uh, is written here, that the men of sin be revealed, okay? So, quite clearly it says here, the rapture is not going to come, not going to come, unless we have the apostasy first, and that the Antichrist be revealed, okay? Once he's revealed, then rapture, okay? But, uh, what we got to have, um, you know, before the rapture also, also is that, uh, they need to be talking about peace and safety. So you need to go to uh, 1 Thessalonians, okay, chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction, meaning rapture. Now, a lot of Bible scholars today are saying that the rapture of the church is imminent and that it can happen at any moment. That's, that's not true at all, because right now in the geopolitical, it actually does not support that. We're actually hearing rumors of wars. I mean, we got Russia against the, the Ukraine. We got um, China provoking Taiwan. And we got these, uh, you know, um, wars in Israel, if you like. We got Israel versus Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And also Israel versus um, Hezbollah in the north are having, you know, serious skirmishes, if you like. And that Hezbollah will be next. But... We cannot have the rapture until they talk about peace and safety because it says once they talk about peace and safety, the true political is not talking about peace and safety right now. Then, then, after peace and safety, then sudden destruction, meaning rapture. Okay, so how can anybody say that the rapture of the church is imminent when we are not hearing peace and safety in, in today's true political? It's all about wars and rumors of wars. So, the, well, clearly the rapture of the church is not imminent. No, it cannot happen at any time or at any moment. That's a false teaching because this is a prophecy, folks. This is a prophecy for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. This is a prophecy, folks. You cannot deny if you're a, you know, a respectful Bible scholar and pastor, you cannot deny that this is a prophecy. We need peace and safety. Now, peace and safety cannot come until Israel is in peace. Okay, so this will happen. Uh, we're going to see the trajectory of, um, you know, Israel. Uh, of course, right now it is in war with, with Hamas. Then they'll do Hezbollah. Now, Isaiah 17.1 and the Elam Bible prophecy is found in Jeremiah 49, verses 34 to 39. They need a trigger point, okay? Just like Ezekiel 38 needs a trigger point, okay? Then uh, this, this big end time Bible prophecy is like Isaiah 17.1 and the Elam Bible prophecy, they too need a trigger point. Now, what are the trigger points for Isaiah 17.1, which will come to pass soon, and also the Elam Bible prophecy? They are, of course, this war that Israel is having now with Hamas in Gaza and also his palace soon, that will trigger Isaiah 17.1 and also the Elam Bible prophecy. In turn, Isaiah 17 and Elam will trigger the Sikh war. This is a synchronous process, okay? Like so, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth gear, okay? It's synchronous because it's done in an orderly manner. You cannot go from first to fifth 
or, or backwards. It's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so all the big end time Bible prophecies have a trigger. In other words, uh, I war, I war triggers this, all these other end time Bible prophecies, if you like. Okay, so uh, this Hamas and Israel and this, uh, you know, Israel and, and Hezbollah will trigger Isaiah 17 and Elam now. We will see a side of 17.1 in the church age because the fact that uh, Lebanon and Syria, which border Israel to the north, they're not part of this, the uh, Ezekiel coalition of 38, 39. The fact that they are not listed is because Israel would have already sent Lebanon into the stone age by uh, eliminating Hezbollah. Okay, and also Syria is also not part of the uh, Ezekiel 38 war because Israel will have uh, fulfilled, um, you know, Isaiah 17.1, okay? Uh, and then, of course, after the Ezekiel war, okay, now the Ezekiel war is going to be the last uh, war, if you like. Why is that? Because at the end of the Ezekiel war, God has to magnify and sanctify himself, okay? Uh, and, you know, many nations, uh, you know, will know about this. And it's actually the, the last conflict because uh, it has a trigger point, okay? The Secret 38, 39 war needs a provocation. And the provocation for the Secret War has to be something big, uh, big to bring Russia, uh, the Iranians and Turkey there, and along with Sudan and Libya. So it, it has to be something big like the Isaiah 17 and the Elam Bible prophecies, okay? Uh, and uh, after the secret war, of course, that will be the perfect time for the Antichrist to uh, rock on the scene. Uh, the peace treaty will be signed, like I have been saying. Uh, we'll probably see Jordan, um, of course, Israel and the Palestinians and Saudi Arabia uh, as these four nations that will pretty much sign disagreement if you like or this covenant because these four nations are very important of course you know I mean we're talking about Israel of course the Palestinians and Jordan because they are the custodians of Temple Mount in Saudi Arabia is because you know the tradition uh, regarding the Muslim five you know of course Mecca is actually in Saudi Arabia so uh, Saudi Arabia you know they are needed or they are needed to, to be brought in if you like uh, because of, uh, you know, the Muslim religion, if you like, or because of Islam. So uh, that's why they are an important partner. But once the covenant is signed, uh, then Israel will get the permission that is needed to rebuild the third temple. Uh, because it's going to be a peace deal, then Israel will have to give up, you know, the West Bank, you know, Judea and Samaria, if you like. Um, I don't think they're going to be giving up the Golan Heights. Um, because uh, I think what Israel will do is just practically give up uh, territories that they have already kind of like given up, not in a legal sense, but, uh, you know, just to have some kind of peace, if you like, in the area, of course. Uh, we know that the West Bank, uh, you know, the Palestinians are living there. And, you know, uh, where we are now at the church age here at the back end, we cannot have any... Uh, you know, political disputes that take a long time to resolve because we don't have a lot of time now back, you know, here in the church age, if you like. You know, normally, uh, you know, when there are conflicts for borders, if you like, uh, they can take years and years uh, to, to resolve um, border disputes and the church age, quite frankly, does not have years. If anything, we call it the most three years, so... Um, you know, the West Bank uh, will be given, uh, if you like, to the Palestinians, East Jerusalem, and uh, Israel will get, you know, Temple Mount to rebuild the Third Temple, if you like. And uh, once the Third Temple uh, is done, you will have to think that the Antichrist has to come out, of course, under Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, okay? We already got the apostasy. Okay, but he's going to be rebuilt himself, okay, after the third temple. And, um, you know, you would think to, you have to think that the third temple has to be inaugurated. So that would be 
I'm not setting a die for the rapture, but that could be a good opportunity for the rapture of the church to occur when that third temple is inaugurated. Uh, of course, you have to think that these Israeli authorities, together with a uh, rabbinite, if you like, and, uh, you know, they had to present that third temple, I'm presuming, you know, by common sense to their Messiah. And then their Messiah can pretty much say, hey, you know, I've got the covenant signed here, bang, rapture of the church. That's this trigger then simultaneously, not only 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, but also uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, when the Antichrist talks about being sensitive, then boom, sudden destruction, uh, rapture of the church. Okay, now uh, let me use the uh, Greek now, the, the correct Greek translation regarding this prophecy, okay, because uh, the majority camp, especially in America, except for a very few American Bible scholars who I have a lot of respect for, they actually agree with me here that um, before the rapture of the church, it cannot, it cannot happen, like it says here, not, okay, so the rapture of the church cannot happen until we have the, the apostasy, okay, and that the, and that the Antichrist be revealed quite clearly. All right, now let's quickly go to the uh, Greek, uh, you know, uh, text here, okay. So as you can see here, the uh, Greek translation, okay. And uh, just bear with me here for one sec, okay. So, um... I'll find that for you. So it says here, um, okay, for, okay, so it starts here. Uh, let's just start from here. For the not quickly to be shaken you from the mind, but not to be disturbed neither through spirit nor through word nor through letter as through us as that was present the day of the master not some you might thoroughly deceive by no by no one manner because if not might come the standing of first okay meaning the uh, apostasy it might be uncovered the man of lawlessness. Okay, so quite clearly it's agreeing with what I'm saying here that we're not going to have the rapture of the church until we have the apostasy first and the man of lawlessness or the man of sin, the son of the destruction. Okay, now uh, the author of this book here, when, when he puts it into uh, plain English, he's agreeing with me. Look what he says here. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day, meaning the rapture, will not, will not. Can, can you guys please understand English? That day, in other words, the day of the rapture, will not come. It's, rapture is not going to happen unless the rebellion comes first, in other words, the apostasy, and the lawless one is revealed. So... What part of the English language is it that you guys don't understand when it says here that that day, meaning the rapture, will not, quite clearly, will not come. No rapture unless two things. One, the rebellion comes first, in other words, apostasy, and the lawless one, in other words, the Antichrist, is revealed. So we've got to have, folks, uh, the apostasy, the rebellion, okay, and the Antichrist be revealed reveal okay the one distance for destruction so in plain english folks you know and the uh, king chance bible backs up what i'm saying so um this book okay is um let me just start it around here so you can see it war study greek english new, new testament uh mcreynolds now this is a very serious uh scholarly publication if you like so uh, let me just show you some of the pages here if you want to get this book okay war study greek english new testament okay as you can see as you can read there
Okay, folks, so um, I hope that I have liked to rest uh, once and for all, you know, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, you know, because the grand majority of Bible scholars don't understand this, you know, and it's just so simple. If you just get the right Bible, you know, the King Chang, you'll be able to understand it quite easily. I mean, the King Chang Bible, um, you know, most pastors know, uh, and I'm sure they will agree with me that uh, the King Chimes, uh, you know, is the best uh, and most uh, correct translation of the Hebrew and the Greek. So, um, and, you know, it quite clearly says what I've been telling you for a long time. We will see the men of sin, the Antichrist, before, before the rapture of the church, okay? Don't believe me? He's not going to come, Okay. Uh, Jesus is not going to come for the rapture until we have the falling away, the apostasy, and that the Antichrist be revealed. Okay, let's see, folks, on that. Now, just regarding then uh, Zephaniah and Zechariah, let's quickly go there. Okay, so Zephaniah, I want to talk about Zephaniah chapter 3, uh, verses 13 to 20. Okay, so if you go to uh, Zephaniah, and you go to chapter 3, okay? And you read uh, verses 13 all the way to uh, 20. This is all for the millennial kingdom, okay? Because quite clearly the teaching, the teaching here is that the Lord has taken away thy judgments. Uh, he has cast out thy enemy. The king of Israel, which is Jesus, is coming for the millennial kingdom to rule. Even the Lord in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. So when Jesus comes uh, to rule uh, in Israel, to be the king of the Jews, if you like, uh, Jesus, the king of Israel, he's going to be in the midst. Okay, so all these verses uh, in chapter 3 from 13 all the way to 20 are for the millennial kingdom, okay, in Zephaniah. And uh, just regarding... Um, Zechariah, okay, so we go to Zechariah chapter 2, okay, Zechariah uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 13, okay, so Zechariah chapter 2, all these verses here, okay, from 1 uh, to uh, 13 are all for the millennial kingdom, okay, all for the millennial kingdom. And uh, I guess the teaching is that and many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. Okay, meaning, you know, after the judgment of the sheep and the goats, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee. In other words, Jesus as the king of Israel, king of the Jews, he's going to, you know, uh, be with his people there. And those shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. Okay, so just to recap, all of Zechariah chapter 2, okay, uh, verses 1 uh, to uh, 13, the whole context is for the millennial kingdom, Jesus coming to be, uh, you know, the king of Israel, okay? Um, I think I wanted to show you something in Jeremiah as well, uh, bear with me, okay, so in Jeremiah, Okay, if you go to chapter 32, okay, so Jeremiah chapter 32, uh, verses 37 to 44 are all for the church age, okay? Um, basically, behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whether I have driven them in my anger and in my fury, uh, and, uh, and in great wrath, in other words, think of... Uh, Ezekiel 37, the dry bones prophecy. So basically, um, you know, chapter 32 from 37 to 44 is actually all for the church age, but for the Jewish people. So um, uh, if you go from 37, uh, you know, all the way to, um, uh, what do you call it, um, 44 here, it's all for the uh, church age, okay, in Jeremiah. So Jeremiah 32, uh, from 37 all the way to uh, verse 44, uh, you know, the whole context is uh, regarding the church age for the Jewish people, 
okay so um yeah so that's all i wanted to do with this video uh folks uh thanks for watching and uh, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like so the other Bible scholars uh you know might be uh, well informed shall we say uh regarding these topics Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll talk to you guys later.